Freddie, like I, I got to ask you, who Ooh. has ultimate GOAT status? Is it MJ or is it LeBron? Tell the people. We're joined by Fred Van Vliet now. Fred, thank you so much for joining me. First and foremost, I want to hear how everything is going at the Van Vliet homestead. Everyone safe, everyone healthy and good? Yeah, everybody's good. We're, uh, we're going through this thing just like everybody else, but we have our health so far. So, you know, nothing to complain about. Any advice for the parents with young kids at home? Because I know you've got two at home that you've been entertaining. Uh, no, try to get them on a schedule. I think that's probably the best thing you can do. And uh, I might sponsor a parent's retreat after all of this is <laughs> over. So can, uh, <laughs> all of us can get some downtime. That's a pretty good idea. Now, one thing I would say everyone seems to be on the same page about is watching The Last Dance right now. The hype has been on 100 million. So what was your interest level diving into it? Uh, I watched it. I was tuned in. I had it recorded and I was sitting there uh, watching it just like everybody else. And um, it just, you know, for me, obviously, we personalized everything. It just took me back down memory lane for our championship and, and how hard it was for us. And you put it in perspective of what those guys accomplished. So, um, you know, to be a part of basketball history is pretty special. And to watch it and get, you know, un, uh, unguided access stuff that people have never seen before I thought that was pretty cool can't wait for the next one right like that Bulls dynasty was before my time it was before your time but you're from Rockford Illinois so what yeah. are your earliest memories of Michael Jordan uh you know it's funny I the first time obviously I saw him play and I saw tape but the first time I actually saw him in person was at his son's high school game so I was I was a young kid and his son was older than me. He was in high school and uh, they played in like the state finals. And so we saw Mike, we were up in the top rafters and we saw him down courtside watching his son play. So that, that was a memory that sticks out in my mind. But uh, the impact he had around this area is so much, you know, so much more than you can even imagine. It's hard to put into words. Has anything surprised you from watching those first two episodes of what you've seen of MJ? Uh, no, not really. I think it's pretty standard. I think it's just more interesting to see him and, and, and how, just how wired he was back then. Like we, we hear the stories and we've heard him speak on it, but to see it real time of how it was back then and to see a different side of him, see him laugh and see him joking, um, you know, see him golfing with guys, uh, uh, you know, and then to find out all the contract stuff. So it's been interesting. I'm, I'm excited to watch the rest of it. Right, I don't think it would fly to golf with uh, an opponent like during a playoff series, no? Yeah, it would be hard to get that off nowadays with social <laughs> media and everything. But uh, if there's one guy that could get away with it, I, I would say it would be Mike. This is probably true. Um, okay, I've got a couple rapid-fire questions for you surrounding the show. The 90s fashion is on full display. So, Fred, if you would you rather rock the MJ full tuck the oversized baggy suits or the Kangol hat and hoop earrings? You got to go with the Kangol hat and the hoop earrings. I don't, I don't know if, uh, hopefully those big suits never come back in the style. Uh, I'll be stepping on my pants if I, if I was to wear some of those. It's just not a good look, but it's everywhere. I love seeing it brought back, right? Yeah. Okay, next question is, MJ bought Scotty Pippen golf clubs, but mainly so he could take all his money on the golf course. What side yeah. hustle would you be very confident in beating all your teammates at? Oh, uh, that's, that's a tough one. Probably, uh, I don't know, maybe like shooting pool or, or gambling or something like that. Some, something simple. Um, I'm not very good at golf. Uh, but there's, there's a few little things that I'm pretty good at. So I think I can get them on the pool table or, or maybe like shooting dice or something. Okay. There were a lot of fire quotes throughout. Uh, obviously, Larry Bird's quote saying, it wasn't Michael Jordan out there. It was God disguised as Michael Jordan. Yeah. What was your favorite soundbite during your Raptors championship run? Uh, that I can share with you guys. <laughs> um. <laughs> or one you can't, Fred. Like, it's all open here. I'll take anything. Oh, man. That's, I would say, um, probably, probably, Ka I, I think it's came out now, but probably Kawhi's, uh, you know, he didn't say a whole lot, but, um, you know, Nick is doing his thing and just kind of going through the motions as a coach and saying, all right, you know, let's go, we lost game two or whatever, let's go get, get one in, in Oakland. And, you know, I'm going to paraphrase here, but Kawhi was just kind of like, eh, let's, 
let's go get both. Like he dropped not, an F bomb. We we've yeah, heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was well. I don't want to be the one to say it, but yeah, I mean, yeah, let's go get two. I think that that kind of just summed up how our team was feeling at the time and and kind of the mindset we were in. And obviously, he was our best guy, and we were following him, and and he kind of set the tone. Absolutely. Of all the characters that we've met through two episodes so far, who do you think fits your bet on yourself mantra the best? Would you say it was Jerry Krause, Scotty Pippen, <laughs> or Phil Jackson? Uh, probably, probably Phil. Probably Phil at this yeah. point. I think I, I like his swagger and just like, all right, this is my last season. This, this is what it is. I don't, I don't want to be here. You don't want me here. Um, Jerry Krause kind of had it, but see the thing with bet on yourself is you don't always win. I don't, you got to put that in a small fine print. So I think that was a case of him betting on himself and, and kind of losing. But definitely couldn't be Scotty with that uh, that contract he was stuck in. But it made sense for him at the time. Right, yeah, it all kind of fit. Yeah, people were feeling some type of way about that, right? Yeah, but it's it's all, it's all it's easy to say that now. You know, at yeah. the time, uh, having gone through what he went through to get there, his family family um, issues and things, you can't, you can't fault the guy for that. But obviously – guys go through things like that so it doesn't doesn't happen again absolutely roy williams uh said in one of the episodes uh there's only one player that can turn it on and turn it off and michael jordan never freaking turns it off which modern player or player you play with right now do you think has that ability um never turns it off i would say for for our team i would say it's probably cal you know yeah. obviously in terms of the way practices is now back then are, are way different. So we don't practice the same way that they used to, but in terms of like just get speaking on games, I've never seen Kyle turn it off in a game. So I would, I would definitely say uh, Kyle is, is always ready to go. As soon as, as soon as the jump ball is ready, he's ready to go. And um, he definitely plays with that fire that you want to see. Yeah. Kyle would be my answer too. So that's, uh, yeah. that makes sense. All right, I saw you tweeted out the Family Guy gif that I love of Peter Griffin beating up the chicken over the weekend <laughs> to describe the LeBron fans against the Jordan fans while we all watch the last dance together. So, Freddie, like, I, I got to ask you, who yeah. has ultimate GOAT status? Is it MJ or is it LeBron? Tell the people. Uh, I don't know. I think it's subjective. I think it's very subjective. I think once you get in the realm that you're even in the conversation, I think you won. So... There's a couple guys, in my opinion, that I go back and forth between and be, you know, MJ. Obviously, Kobe was my favorite player and uh, LeBron. And I think it's just, you know, up to who you like. Because you can make an argument for either one of them. But um, it's hard to compare guys that didn't play in the same time. So some of those things are different. I don't I don't really want to get into it. I just wanted to make a, a joke about it because I, I have been seeing I'm, – I'm, I haven't been on my this much in a long time. So – I was seeing all the commentary going back and forth, and I was just like, man, these fans are so uh, passionate about the guys that they love, but that's what makes the game great. That's it, right? It's relentless online when they're talking about them. Uh, yeah. When it comes to Jordan and what you've seen so far and what will obviously come, like what qualities of Michael do you admire the most as a basketball player that you hope to always have? Um, just that, that he put winning first, and I know that that rubs some people the wrong way, and I'm sure he has some teammates over the years that, that probably got the, the wrong end of that, but I think that that's what we all aspire to do is to win, and as long as you're not, you know, crossing your moral guidelines of what you stand on, I think that that's, that's the most important thing that even from day one, him coming in and not wanting to rest because he didn't want to lose, he wanted to make the playoffs, he didn't care about, you know, lottery and things like that, like that, that pure heart when you play in the game of just putting winning first. Um, I think that's, that's something that I, I can resonate with a lot. Absolutely. Well, thanks for chatting, Fred. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you.